hello and welcome. A short demo uh, for the Teams uh, toolkit using Blazor, an example called the Teams leaderboard. Um, some content information, not so important, but that's how you can reach me later on. In terms of, of Teams development, you probably all know or heard about all the different options we as developers have to integrate, enrich, enhance uh, whatever euphemism you want to use, uh, the Teams platform. And there is something new uh, in the making. It's still in, in preview and not released. So I expect this slide actually, or I hope that or there is somebody already working on a newer version from this slide for Ignite in a couple of weeks. But uh, we have since a couple of weeks the option with Teams FX, uh, the Microsoft Teams framework, two options actually to create team solutions in a different way. There's the Teams Toolkit for Visual Studio Code that is based on top of your well-known and respected technology from TypeScript, Node.js, JavaScript to create applications uh, that way. And there is also uh, an option to go to the .NET way using Blazor uh, for Visual Studio 2019. And that's something we're going to focus uh, today. So that's Teams FX. Um, we already had a PNT call, I think, a couple of weeks ago. So I'm not doing the, the total introduction, but there are links in the presentation to videos and articles that really get you going. But today we want to make an example. And for that example, we want to set the reference right and make a short uh, business case. Um, in, in a dream world, there is the mindful Teams consultant him or her, doesn't matter, uh, sitting somewhere nice and thinking of what is really needed. And what's really needed is happy users, happy end users. And there are different ways to reach that. And one, of course, is uh, use gamification. And that's what we are doing with the, with the leaderboard. But with gamification, you need to be a little bit careful because if there are winners, there are also people on the other side of, of the table. Uh, so be careful. Um, and my parents always told me that you can learn nothing from watching movies. And actually, that's false when you see that quote. Um, enough from PowerPoint. Um, let's write, uh, dive right into the demo. The leaderboard is running in the back already here. It's a, a Teams application. I'm going to show you the application up front, and then we can walk through the code. It's a simple static Teams step at the moment. Um, I'm logged in on my developer tenant. I can have a look at a team. Let's go for the PNP demo team. And there is a channel selection. And I have the scoring lab channel here. It refreshes, and then it scores uh, points and it gives a leader point. Um, what's that all about? Uh, we have here in a different world, I'm logged in as, as Chris Kent. Uh, so to make that more interactive, we have this scoring lab channel here. And you see uh, there are, uh, yeah channel messages, replies, um, interactions with, with emojis, and all the typical stuff that you do in a channel. And the leaderboard actually counts all those things. So we give different uh, amount of points for um, messages. We give points, extra points for a message with a subject, because everyone likes to have proper subject in a, in a Teams channel. And of course, we have reactions here. So when I, as Chris, just copy one of his last tweets over here to really have something powerful to say to my rather senseless comments. So I post it here. And if I switch back to my other view, you see here, at first, of course, I get the information. Um, I'm switching back and just have 14, 13 here, switching back to channels. And you see, uh, I got more points now. So that's a, a live. Uh, grabbing all the, the channel messages and going through that um, and counting all the different scores. How's that built? Let's stop the debugger for a second. Um, that's actually built with Teams FX. Um, the component you get when you install the Teams uh, toolkit for Visual Studio, how do you do that? You click on Manage Extensions over here and just search for Teams. And be careful. Take the Teams Toolkit Preview. There is a different one for Teams also that's outdated, but the Teams Toolkit Preview is the one that you want to have. Um, you need to do that still in Visual Studio 2019. It's not available yet in Visual Studio 2022, but you can start your uh, solution here and then open it with the new version as well to make all the fun with Hot Reload and .NET 6 working. But for today, we stay with the with the simple version in, in .NET 5. Um, it's one tab here. So it's a simple tab um, that 
uses some some components that are open sourced. I'm not 100% sure how to pronounce that, so I, I leave that out. But there's a data grid and some columns that is actually the uh, the the board, and there are two drop downs with values. And of course, the the drop downs gonna pop are populated at the beginning with our teams. So when we at first render the page, at first we gonna set up Teams FX. That's actually uh, a class, a helper class that comes with the Teams toolkit. It's down here, Teams FX. So if you create a new project, you already get the project scaffold that way. In that case, I only added, I think, 60 or 80 lines of code in there. So the structure is the same when you when you start now, and it's also already um, creating this uh, first on after render async method. So you just need to add your own code here. Um, and my code down is here. So I'm adding uh, a get teams method and the get teams method uh, gets a graph service client. And the graph service client is also something you get from the teams toolkit. And basically it's already authenticated. It is using a single sign on. How does this work? When you start first time with your teams FX project, go to project, you have this point teams FX here and you can click configure for SSO. And with that click, uh, the Visual Studio instance will ask you for your identity um, the first time. So that should be the identity of hopefully your development tenant because with that account, you need to have permissions to create Teams applications and you need to have the permissions to create uh, Azure Active Directory applications in your Azure tenant. That's all that, or all, this button uh, does all that for you. And it updates also your manifest because behind the scenes, of course, there's a Teams manifest somewhere, um, all on local host at the moment, because when I debug the session, it's just in my local browser and it's just uh, an iframe in my Teams instance, not running in, in, in Azure somewhere, just all local. But that actually gets created um, by clicking configure and by creating your first solution. And as you see here, it's just a content URL because we only have a static tab and the URL is tab. If I go back to my tab.razor file and make the switch to the top, you see page tab. That's the blazer or razor way to tell the system, okay, I want to be in this route. Um, and going back to the graph client, as it's already, is everything is configured here, we have single sign on in place, we just can call uh, the graph service client. Behind the scene, what is happening, uh, Teams FX in a Blazor way is basically uh, a, a wrapper component uh, using uh, JavaScript interoperability between Blazor and the Teams SDK. And they are using uh, the Teams uh, JavaScript SDK in the background to get uh, your bearer token. And if you uh, double click on the graph service client in the end of the day, JavaScript code grabs your token using the SSO behavior of the Teams SDK. And then it hands over uh, to um, the .NET graph uh, client and says, okay, let's create a new graph client. I already have a bearer token for you. Let's use that. And then we have a graph client here. And with that client, we can just go and list all our teams. Very simple, me join teams and get back and then sort it to have it properly and nicely sorted in our um, drop down. And from there, we only need to add code that does something, of course, when the Teams dropdown changes. Uh, when that happens, we're going to search for all the channels in that selected team. And then we're going to do something when you select something in your dropdown from the channels, because you first select your team, then you select the channel. And from there, we're going to start and load score data. And the score data basically um, is then going to go and say, OK, I know now the team ID. I have the channel ID from my um, selection from the drop down. I, I kept the uh, starting point there because you, all you would you see here is already uh, up on GitHub. And for reference, just to get started very quickly or for developing purpose, it makes sense to sometimes start quickly, provide your team ID, provide your channel ID and you're sure and you don't need to double click all the selection points. So hard coded values are also possible, um, of course, and then you're going to fetch all the messages. And for all the messages, uh, we're going to look for, OK, does the message have a subject? If the subject is not null, then their subject exists. And then we say add score from the user ID, from username. And then we have a sophisticated scoring model that basically says, I think, seven for a message 
uh, with a subject and we add that through. So with subject, with other subject, and then we are counting reactions. But we want to have all the messages and all the replies also in our calculation. So for each chat message, we also go in there and call again the graph and call all the different replies. And again, from the replies, we are also scoring, uh, is it just a reply or is it a reaction on the reply? And with all the data, um, we end up having a score list and a, and a leader list. And basically that parameter is then bound to our, uh, just our uh, component over here. You see here, load score data is the method and the count and the data is there. And that's how easy you can create this rather simple leaderboard. And I start again to you see the experience that you have when you press F5. It always wants to install the app uh, in a new way. And then it will load here. I can select the PNP team again, have my channel here, and we get back the resources or the, the, the results again. So that's it from, from where we are at the moment. Um, so wrap it up. Uh, what you, what you saw actually is a, a Teams application using Teams FX for scaffolding a, a Blazor project. We called a graph to retrieve messages and did some uh, counting and counted messages in a certain way to create a leaderboard and created a, a small component uh, to make that available as a tab. Um, from there, what can we do next? Uh, we could also add code to make that not only a static tab, but also a tab for a channel. So that it's not an application that's bound to a person, but more to a channel. So we get the environment and could easily just target one channel. We could add notifications about leaders and channel messages with adaptive cards or bot messages. We could notify winners. And uh, the most interesting part for myself, and that's just a preview and, and uh, yeah, uh, something that is coming the next weeks. Um, if we move that all over to .NET 6 and we use the power of uh, Blazor and Maui, we can make applications that are running in Teams using a library component from Blazor and the same application then can be surfaced in iOS and Android and desktop. But that's something I'm looking forward to over the next weeks. Here are the resources. And with that, I say thank you and hand it back to Paolo. Thank you, Thomas. Uh, thank you. Great demo, like always. Uh...